after another turbulent year for international trade in the economy, might there be a brighter outlook for 2022? Well, joining me now to discuss that is David Hennig, and David is director of the UK Trade Policy Project at the European Centre for International Political Economy. David, next year, a glittering 2022 or more gloom and doom? Somewhere in between for, uh, for, for, the, for the year ahead, I feel. Um, look, by now, I think we all know that stable trading conditions are not coming back for a while. There's going to be a tale of, uh, of COVID. It's going to carry on for a while. We know there have been supply chain disruptions. They're going to carry on for a while. But on the other hand, trade is still working. Supply chains are still working. Companies are responding to what they're seeing. They're responding to the uncertainty by building in more inventory, building in uh, you know, a little bit more caution into their, uh, into their plans. We are seeing a little bit of price rise, prices rising. But essentially, what we're seeing is the market responding to the uh, uncertainty as we'd expect the market to, uh, to respond. And actually, trade in the last year has done well. Numbers have been up. So I expect that trade will continue to, to grow, but against a backdrop of some uncertainty. So trade will continue to grow, but supply might be a problem. Supply of individual items can be a problem. We know about the, uh, the, the semiconductor issues. People are looking at fixing them. There's a, there's a lead time to that. These complex supply chains are here to stay. They're at the heart of the modern global economy. And as with all um, complexity, there are issues, but companies will always respond. So I think a, a big question is whether that natural response of the market is able to play out or whether governments try to, to intervene and perhaps make things worse. That's something we're, we're looking at for, for 2022. Uh, in all economics ministries, there is a temptation to think they, they can fix the problems, whereas from what we've seen in the last year, the market does a pretty good job. Companies are trying to put things in the right way. They're thinking, look, if we're possibly going to have some shortages, how can we best adapt? There is a process of adaptation going on in the private sector. We're more worried about the, uh, what the government might do to that. Worried in what way, David? Well, what we see in, for example, the EU and the US are signs that the government wants to, a government wants to intervene and essentially see supply chains coming back within their own geographical areas. And that's not how supply chains work. And we're worried that they will put distortions into the market. They might potentially close their, their markets. Companies would then have some pretty tough choices to, uh, to, to make about how, th how they uh, went forward with, the, with, their, with their own plans. And we also, we could see growing protectionism if it's seen that um, the US, the EU and others are using um, subsidies, public subsidies to uh, fi finance production. These are the kind of things that sets off trade disputes. So a lot of concerns in what government might do with supply chains under the view that supply chains aren't working. They are. Mostly supply chains are working. There are issues, but we are mostly getting what we want. So um, it shouldn't be a cause for panic. Inflation, David. Inflation in Europe. Uh, inflation in the UK, around the world, something of an issue. Do you see inflationary pressures continuing in 2022? I think what we can say is the era of stable low inflation seems to be over. There are divides as to whether Europe, the US and others face a continued above 5% inflation, which is where we are right now, or we recede a little lower towards three or four. Now, policy choices come into that, wages come into that, outside influences like energy prices are pretty important. There's a lot of costs also going in towards the um, climate change, tackling the climate emergency and green policies, and that is affecting potentially uh, energy prices as well and perhaps nudging up inflation. On balance, I suspect inflation continues to be a concern for policymakers during the next 12 months. I don't think it, it returns to a nice, stable norm during the, uh, during the year. I think there are worries. I think that we see policymakers responding. Um, 
But hopefully, in most cases, that's more about inflation at around 5%. That's very high by recent levels, obviously, rather than much higher than that, where we would start to get into potentially inflationary spirals and wages following. And, of course, along with uh, inflation go uh, interest rates. Uh, historically low during the pandemic, they're going to be heading upwards, aren't they, in 2022? Uh, and if they do, what does that mean for you and me? We're almost back to the economics of the 1970s as to whether policymakers can control a slowdown from uh, a post-COVID -re recovery or whether we run the risk of what uh, Gordon Brown, the former UK Prime Minister, used to call a, a boom-to-bust economy. Um, interest rates are likely to, to rise. That is going to uh, affect, affect us. Obviously, those who are uh, uh, pay, pay, paying more mortgages will be will be paying more. That and also com companies who are borrowing money that does um, uh, re reduce reduce demand potentially can be good for uh, for, for for savers depending on the, uh, the the level of real interest rate. Um, but much depends, I think, on the way that works globally. Um, you know, there is a risk that Asia, Europe, America so somehow kind of sl slow down together and they, they choke off too much demand in the, uh, in the global economy. I think that's probably unlikely. Um, I suspect there is enough demand to keep economies running and we're not going. I think that there'll be caution on the part of policymakers in raising interest rates too much. I think that's what we've already seen. And therefore... Um, it's likely, I think, that we continue to run with slightly higher inflation rates um, because policymakers will prefer that than risking choking off uh, demand and um, going, going into a recession situation. 2022, Brexit is done and dusted. Are we still seeing a hangover from Brexit? Uh, and if so, will that continue? We're seeing a, a transformation of the UK economy after Brexit, and that's inevitable. The UK economy has put up barriers to, to trading with the, the EU, so we're going to do less of it. We're going to um, move, into, move potentially into other areas of, uh, of, of trade, maybe more, more services, more, more, gl more global trade. Um, UK industrial production in particular looks vulnerable, given those barriers and the... In the, um, the way in which European supply chains are organised, that we could well see uh, more of the uh, European supply chains, companies that, that feed that in the UK, moving into, uh, into the EU. We have already seen that during the year. Projected UK growth figures after this recovery look poor. Indeed, um, e even the most recent figures, not great for the, uh, for the, for the UK. So a little bit of gloom, I think, on the, around the UK economy and the prospects and what the plan for growth is. At the moment, on the EU side, looking very positive. But again, those downside risks on state intervention and protection, the worry that, if you like, the French approach to the economy of a lot of protection is actually going to, to stifle um, potential long-term growth of the, uh, of the EU as well. So it's not a great picture across the whole of Europe, in fact, on the sort of long-term projection. Any cause at all, David, for optimism in 2022? Cheer me up. Well, well, the travel industry is obviously really hoping for significant growth, and I think that once restrictions again lift, I think there's a lot of people want to uh, want to get back to uh, to travelling. Um, they, they've been suffering the most, um, and similarly, segments that involve travel, such as universities, um, a lot of people looking at a virtual provision. What can we do more of? So there'll be a, a lot of people interested in uh, in, in finding new ways to uh, to, to provide services uh, remotely. That market's got a long way to go. There's a whole big area around environmental services. We talk about the climate emergency. Countries have now put uh, you know put their commitments down we're going to reduce them, our emissions in this way well there's a whole lot of um, trade that needs to be done around that around the provision of expertise say how are you going to do that the the, the supply of environmental services one i hear increasingly uh, di discussed around there's other technology developments that will make make trade easier there will always inevitably be good news stories there will be companies that are growing companies finding new products um uncertain background well uncertainty is a great environment for innovation always has been, and I'm sure it will be in 2022 as well. David Hennig, many thanks to you for joining us on the agenda.